Good day, Church Fellowship, and welcome to the LJCC update for Thursday, November the 4th. Again, we've said it before, I've said it on the update, we said it on Sunday. Thank you so much for your participation in our Church Health Assessment Project. It's my hope that you were here for class to hear the official report from that. If you weren't able to make it to class and would like to view uh, just the, the raw data that came out and some of Carson's reflections on it, you can send us a, a call us at the church office or send us an email. We will email you the link for that uh, file. We've chosen not to make it a public file on our YouTube channel, but if you would like to have access to it, we'd be glad to send that to you. So uh, please, uh, if you would like to view it, and I encourage you to view it. There's a lot of encouraging information there, as well as, of course, always some challenges, some places where we need to continue to grow. But more than anything, I wanted to say thank you for your participation in the process. Thank you for uh, taking the time to fill out the assessment. Thank you for praying about the process as it unfolded. And in reality, I want to continue to ask for your prayers because we don't just take the assessment to get a, somehow to get a grade and say, oh, okay. We take the assessment to help us clarify where we are so that we can do a better job of setting goals and objectives and, and setting a vision is what the word, the catchword is, setting a vision for the future of where we're going. We will always be about loving God, loving our neighbors. We will always be about going and making disciples in the name of Jesus Christ. That will never change. We will always be about being His light and salt and hope and peace and love in the world. But how will we engage in those broad mission ideas in a vision for where we're going in the future. I need you to be praying about that, praying for our elders in that, praying for our ministries and how they're going to step into that particularly. Well, welcome to November. Isn't it wonderful to have it here? Uh, the air is cool and crisp outside. I asked some people earlier today, I, I said, welcome to fall, but uh, today, at least for the Gulf Coast, today almost feels like a winter day, a little cool, brisk wind blowing. It, going to feel like you need a jacket when you're on outside. Uh, but uh, particularly as we begin November, first Sunday in November is the uh, time that we uh, step out of daylight saving and uh, go back to standard time. And so we'll be falling back this Sunday and I encourage you to set your clocks before you go to sleep on Saturday. But boy, what a great Sunday, extra hours of sleep, great Sunday to be here for Bible class at 930. Hope to see you there. We are uh, want to move your vision just a little further ahead in November. We are welcoming Wes Wilson and his wife Nicole and their family Bree and Bennett to uh, town on the weekend of November 19th through the 21st. They'll be coming in to interview for our youth ministry position and I uh, would, would really encourage you to be praying about how that weekend goes even more, I realize it's kind of the opening weekend, uh, uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving. School will be out that week. Really want to encourage particularly our families with youth and please hear this, our families with older children. You need to be there. You need to meet Wes. You need to hear him. Your kids maybe need to have a little bit of interaction with him in one way or another because it's important. It's important for the future of our church. It's particularly important for the future of our youth ministry. And so even though you may have thought, well, we'll get out a little early, I would really encourage you to stay at least uh, through Sunday morning to hear Bible class and things like that that are going to be going on. Be praying for Wes and his family and their travels, and particularly that we will see things the way God wants us to see them as we continue forward in the process. Really uh, appreciate Kevin Hunter uh, listing out our youth ministry search team. Really thankful for those people who've put a lot of effort in. We're still very early in the process as far as kind of a timeline that it often takes to do this kind of tran transition. Um, so continue to pray for them as well. Need you to let you know that we have a great problem. Don't you love great problems? They're problems, but they're a problem because a good thing is going on. And that happens to be the case this on Wednesday nights. Uh, we have gotten a real neat influx of kids, kids from our neighborhood. The idea of reaching out to our neighbors is kind of having some fruit in this way. So we're really, really thankful for that. 
but we are needing a couple of helpers. You don't need to be thinking in terms of being the lead teacher or anything like that. We have a great class going on. Jamie Hunter and Kelly McBrayer headed up. Uh, we need some helpers to just kind of help. Uh, these are young children. Some of them need to have things cut out and help them with crafts and things like that. Also, there's a lot of digging into your Bible, and so many of the younger children aren't sure exactly where things are in their Bible, and you can help them with that part as well. If that's something that you feel like you could respond to, please reach out to Jamie Hunter. She would love to hear from you. Let her know. And in reality, we hope that we get enough people to respond to this that it's not that you have to be there for months on end but you can work one month and we can shift to another group of people in another month. Think about how you could help. God's answering a prayer that we've been praying that we can reach out to the families of our area. That is happening. He has sent that increase. Let's be faithful and respond to the needs, the challenges that presents as we move forward. I'm needing, I'm really needing you to, to come through and help us with that. So please give an effort to that. I'm going to point us forward to some upcoming events, if you can. Coming up this Saturday, um, if you're one of the women in our congregation, you should have gotten an email already back uh, last week. I believe it would have been after last Sunday. Uh, you would have gotten a, an email that has the link to the Zoom, uh, the Zoom link for Zoom meeting that's going to be the Gulf Coast Ladies Bible Study. I uh, really encourage you to be part of the fellowship of that group. Lisa Pauls is going to be speaking. I know you're going to be blessed by what she has to say. I think she's going to be coming out of Matthew. So you'll be blessed by that. Um, but uh, be a part of that. If you can't find the email, don't think you received the email, please call us at the office tomorrow morning. Friday morning is going to be the best time to do that. And uh, we will be sure that you get that. We can send it to you as a text. We can send it to you as an email, whichever way works best for you. Looking forward into November the 14th is a, a great date, a lot of things going on. Um, but particularly, I want you to know that that Sunday morning will be the beginning of, and, and boy, you, you have to know me, um, I'm, I'm, I don't like to do Christmas stuff before we get done with Thanksgiving. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But in reality, this year, we need to kind of be aware that, um, that we, we've got to get these uh, Arms of Hope gift cards. We've participated in this project for several years now where we purchase and donate gift cards, not cash, not money, but gift cards to various retailers. Uh, there's, there'll be a list of those retailers. Um, that in reality, it winds up being places that are close to either Medina or Bowles Homes, one near Dallas, one near San Antonio, um, that, that they can easily access things to buy for Christmas gifts for those kids. The house parents can buy Christmas gifts for the house kids. And so it's a, it's a wonderful project. If you've ever participated in it, you know the blessing of being able to kind of hand that and how God kind of fills that special uh, sense of, of giving to someone who can't take care of themselves feels. Uh, that again will start on Sunday the 14th. They'll be due on December the 12th. So uh, we wanted to go on and get them out to you before you really got heavily into Thanksgiving things and still have enough time to get them back to us so that we can get them to the various children's homes that, uh, we, that work with Arms of Hope. But also, just as we're talking about those kind of projects, remember that we'll be asking you as well to help us out with Christmas baskets. Um, but that'll be on the other side of Thanksgiving as we talk about that more. But I at least wanted to plant that thought. Monday the 15th will be our next prime timers gathering. That, of course, starts at 1130. A great time of fellowship, great food together. And I'd encourage you to mark that on your calendars and be prepared for it. And also, I mentioned last week, I want you to mark your calendars for Sunday night, November the 21st. Yes, we'll have had a big weekend with Wes and the, Wil the Wilson family with us that weekend. But uh, that Sunday night, boy, it's got a great time for you and your family to kind of set your hearts for the celebration of Thanksgiving. We call it the family journey of Thanksgiving. This is the year where we'll be doing various stations around the building, whether it's prayer or coloring or an artistic station or writing notes, or there's usually some food involved and some sort of craft involved. Very family friendly, great for kids. I just really, again, want to encourage you, mark that on your calendar, make a plan to be there. 
Also, finally, I want to be sure you're aware that there is a Bible for George and Kelly Lane that's out in the Welcome Center. It's one of our farewell Bibles. We're sad about that. We haven't really gotten to know Emma uh, just because of how quickly this transition happened for them, not an intention uh, on their part, but just kind of, again, sale of house goes faster than you think and uh, purchase of a new house goes faster than you think. She has family over in the Webster area and they, with the new baby, she wanted to be near her family and so they have made the move in that direction. George is going to continue with his uh, survey business here in Lake Jackson but actually will be opening another office in, in the Webster area and uh, so we, we, we have really appreciated getting to be part of that young couple's lives and walk with them as she has moved through this pregnancy and pregnancy during COVID and all those kinds of things. And so I encourage you to find that Bible and sign your name, maybe a quick note or something like that uh, so that we can give that to them and bless them as they move, continue to move forward in their lives. Well, let's shift to our prayer list now. I'm going to start, as we do always, with our thanksgivings. We're really thankful. Belinda Tavry had day surgery on her arm, uh, something to do with her ulnar. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. And it went as well as possible. This was uh, beginning of last week, and she's already experiencing a great deal of relief, and we're really, really thankful that that's the case. Pam Riddle let us know that she's about halfway through her rehab on her broken shoulder. We prayed for Pram when she broke that shoulder and is showing some significant improvement as she moves forward. She asked, that, however, that we continue to pray that even more improvement will come as she finishes out her rehab. Turning to those uh, needs that we need to mention, uh, Clyde and Janice Stewart are asking for help in locating a caregiver for Clyde. Uh, Clyde is experiencing some dementia and uh, they are needing uh, some help uh, around the house. They have had one and she's had to move on to another job and they're needing a reliable caregiver that can come in and help them out with things. If you think of somebody, please be sure and reach out to them with that. More than that, we need to be praying that this process that someone has identified and that it's, it's a very successful um, team that gets put together to, to take care of, of him and to take care of them. We miss Clyde and Janice very much and uh, we hope for days that we get to see them again. Please continue to remember Kathy Lee Davis as she moves forward as she faces this neurolog neurological disorder. And let's continue to remember Cindy Yates and the Yates family and Zane Lee as well. We want to remember uh, Peter Hunt has let us know that his father, James Hunt, we've prayed about him several times, his father who's in England, Bristol, has been diagnosed now with prostate cancer. Again, we've prayed for him because he's been struggling with dementia, failing kidneys, and even lung cancer. But uh, now with the, this diagnosis of prostate cancer, the family is now considering uh, hospice care for him. So we want to pray for Peter and pray for that whole family and pray for John Hunt as well. We want to mention Naomi Crumrun to you. She's a six-month-old daughter. Uh, many of you have your car repaired at Jay's Auto. Uh, this is Jay's granddaughter. She's a family friend of Pam, Beth Pan, and uh, she was hospitalized last week. She's been in a battle with uh, childhood abdominal cancer and some white blood cell counts rose really high, and so they've had her in the hospital. Uh, that was early last week. We haven't gotten an update about whether she's out. My guess is because we don't have an update, she's still in the hospital. So let's remember Naomi Crumrun. Also, we want to remember those who have COVID issues. Chiffon York has tested positive for the second time with COVID, and she at this point is reporting minimal symptoms, but let's keep her in our prayer. Randy York has tested negative, but is suffering from allergies, which is a familiar tale we're hearing these days. Remember folks like um, Brian Frazier, Randy and Sandy Moore, who have an acute uh, allergy issues right now. Also, we need to remember Wanda Long, who's now under the care of a lung specialist for her residual COVID pneumonia. She still is, if you talk to her, she sounds really good, but they can't quite get all that fluid out. And we need to be praying that that can be completely cleared up and hoping this specialist can help with that. Father, we, and we also uh, wanna remember Mary Cronk, who continues to rehab and take positive steps to recovery uh, as she recovers from COVID as well. 
Continue to pray for those battling cancer, including Vicki Johnson, Dina Voigt, Rick King, LaVonda Potts, we already mentioned Naomi earlier, Chepo San Miguel, Ben Lascano, Danny Bice, D. Rambo, and Maria Vargas. Finally, I need you to particularly, we pray pretty regularly for Hope for Haiti's children. We have been since these crises, the earthquake and the assassination of the president, all the political unrest that's going on there. You, have, of course, have heard about the kidnapping of the Christian missionaries. I believe most of you know, I've mentioned last week that uh, Craig Nesbitt's sister, her name is Rhonda Pierce, uh, is with a group. That group's name is LifeSpeak. I wanted to update you that LifeSpeak has, has advised all of their U.S. citizens who are working in Haiti that they need to get out. Um, they're uh, helping them do that, of course. Uh, Rhonda is married uh, to Frady Pierce, and uh, he doesn't have a U.S. visa, and so her exit plan is complicated. Uh, it's a, in reality a very dangerous time. We need to pray for their safety very, very specifically. Uh, Craig has connected them with Joaquin and they are thinking of trying to get over to the Dominican Republic and, and what is uh, a much safer scenario over there. And, uh, we want to pray again, safety, that wise decisions are made. If a visa can come through, we need to pray for that for Freddy. Uh, they've asked for an exp expedited processing of that. Uh, whether or not that can be done. Uh, but bottom line is we need to remember Rhonda and Freddie Pierce and again, all of those in Haiti, not just U.S. workers there, but every single person in Haiti, our Christian brothers and sisters in Haiti. We wanna to continue to remember our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and again, all the citizens there. Things continue to not go well there, although it's it just like Haiti have left the front pages of the paper and the mainstream media. As we continue forward, uh, we wanna to continue to remember our courageous teachers, our healthcare workers, our, our first responders, fire police and EMS, and of course, continue to pray for our military. I wanna to continue to mention that we pray for President Biden and Governor Abbott. We don't have to agree with their decisions, but we should be praying that God give them wisdom and that God influence them to look for justice and peace for all people. Well, we've got some birthdays. I didn't mention any last week, so here's a, a few belated birthdays. Kevin Davis was last Friday, October the 29th. Last Sunday, the 31st, was Ann Whitaker. Happy birthday, Ann, over in North Carolina. Brass Raver's birthday was last Monday, the 1st of November. And last Tuesday, November the 2nd, Brandy Peltier and Lowell Good had birthdays. Yesterday, November the 3rd, was Van Manning's birthday. Happy birthday, guys. Coming up this week, Saturday the 6th, will be Ronnie Mullen's birthday. Scott Metters, former youth minister here, friend of mine from way back in my childhood. Next Tuesday, November the 9th, is his birthday. Next Wednesday the 10th, we have both Lauren Fosner and Whitney Young, a blast from the past there. Today, we want to celebrate and say happy birthday to Carrie Cole. Uh, we are uh, continuing to, to mourn with you over the loss of Her Helen, but I uh, want to wish you a happy birthday today and pray that God continues to fill up the empty places in your life so that you can continue to celebrate the life and the blessings that he gives you now. Thanks for the way that you are a blessing to so many around here as well. So happy birthday, Carrie. And we have an anniversary this week. Manuel and Melinda Chacon, sorry, not this week, last Friday, October the 29th. Happy birthday to the, happy anniversary to the Chacones. One final big celebration, congratulations, I guess is what's in order. George Belize completed his bachelor's degree in information technologies last week. And so congratulations, George, big hurdle. Very proud of you, congratulations. Finally, wanna be sure we mentioned uh, the death of, death of Sihan Warnke a couple of weeks ago. Elizabeth Warnke wants to invite everyone to a celebration of life for her husband. Uh, it will be held on Sunday, November the 14th, Sunday the 14th at 2 p.m. at the Stephen F. Austin statue. Uh, there's a reception hall there and that's where it'll be. There'll be food and music, and pictures and speakers. Uh, Hope that you'll consider being a part of that and celebrate uh, Sihan's life and also be there to support Lisbeth as well. 
As we begin November, I've already mentioned it a couple of times, we're pointing forward to Thanksgiving. And I have to ask myself, anytime, am I continuing to be thankful? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 through 11 is a, is a haunting passage in reality. Uh, God says, when you come into the land where you have wells that you didn't dig and vineyards that you didn't plant and houses that you didn't build, don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. Jesus said, remember me whenever you take the Lord's Supper. And remembering isn't just the idea of, of I've got that on file back there, but remembering is about living into what Jesus did. Don't forget the Lord isn't just about saying, okay, I remember God up here on the top of the list. But what is the implication of the idea that God has done so much, has blessed us in so many rich ways? Are we thankful? I appreciate the reminder of the calendar. I realize that thankfulness is an everyday, all year kind of affair. There should always be. And my prayer is that every day you are are engaged in not just kind of a passive prayer, but a, a earnest sort of stopping and saying, God, thank you. Thank you for what's going on around me. And maybe in those most difficult kind of circumstances to particularly step back and take a deep breath and say, thank you for what is, even if you're in the midst of some significant challenges. The Passover was a yearly celebration to kind of once again remind them what God had done in bringing them out of Egypt in the, the way that he did that so powerfully. So it's a very consistent kind of thing from the Bible to say, yes, we need to remember what God has done all year. We need to be thankful every day, all year long, year after year after year. But there's nothing wrong with the calendar reminding us and I, I appreciate the calendar reminder and I look forward to celebrating it maybe even as much as Christmas, maybe even to a certain extent a little more in certain ways because there's not quite so much commercial around it. Well, I've asked you this before and I'm going to send the challenge out to you again. This is called what I call the, the Thanksgiving text message challenge. Uh, as you know, your phone, most of your phones will kind of prompt you on certain words. You'll start typing something and they say, oh, do you want to type this word and fill it in for you? And I, I want to challenge you. I want you to say thanks so many times this month in your text messages. Find two or three people every day to say, thanks for doing this, thanks for doing that. Such that when you press a T on your phone, the, the word that it comes up and says, maybe this is what you want to fill in. At least one of the choices is thanks. Let's see if we can head in that direction such that the prompt says thanks because we say thanks so incredibly often. You and your fa church family, I just want to say it one more time, you and your church family and our, you and your family and our whole church family will be blessed by an investment of time on Sunday night, November the 21st. So I realize it may not be convenient. I've actually checked. There's a cowboy game, Dallas Cowboys versus Kansas City. I'm sure the Texans are playing sometime that day as well. At any rate, I hope that you'll make a plan to be here at 530 to be part of the family journey of Thanksgiving because I really think you'll be blessed uh, in that effort. Families of all ages, little ones, older ones, you don't have any kids at home, maybe the grandkids have come in, bring them along. Whatever it may be, I think it would be a great activity. We'd love to see you there. Am I thankful? Are you thankful? Won't you join with me in prayer as we close out today? Our Father and God, we want to thank you for these uh, birthdays that we've mentioned, the anniversary of the Chacones that we've mentioned. Also, we, we want to celebrate with George Valise and this uh, great accomplishment in his life and pray for the, the blessing uh, that he can be with, with the acquisition of that degree and thank you for the blessing he continues to be uh, here at church and in his family. Father, we want to thank you for the success of Belinda Tavry's surgery. We want to thank you for the success of Pam Riddle's continued rehab. We're thankful that Bob Long's continuing to do well and that baby Jay Barnes is at home and things are going well there. We want to thank you for um, the opportunity we have to pray for Clyde and Janice Stewart and we pray for that situation with a caregiver to resolve itself 
uh, quickly and to resolve itself well. We lift up Kathy Lee Davis to you and Joanne Taylor. We lift up Cindy Yates and Tiffany Baker and Ralph and Norkin and Orlean. We lift up Shirley Kimmerling and Zane Lee, Nell Brown, Ron and Nora McDaniel, Robin Loftus and Janine Phillips and Mary Henderlang, Paula Roper, Charlie and Candy Crest, Sandra Mullins, we lift up Jack Scott and his mother Meg Scott and Nicole Swanson. We lift up Dee Rambo and Joanne Roots and April Barton, Barbara Greenway. We lift up Jim and Judy Carl to you. Father, we lift up Bob Dozier. We are thankful that his recovery continues to go well, be with them as they sort through this new kind of normal in their life. We lift up Nina Voigt and uh, Vicki Johnson and Jeffrey Fuller and Rick King and Panchito and Jennifer Jimenez, Jose San Miguel, Lavonda Potts and Iola Moore. We lift up Dave Newberry to you and Vicki Kimlowski and Bid Lascano and Maria Vargas and Danny Bice and Edna Allen. We lift up Carlita Malky up in Idaho. Keep her warm on these cold days. We lift up Jason Fagan and Carolyn Hunter and little Allie Wade. Father, uh, we lift up our COVID folks, Stefan York, and pray that she can be quickly recovered and healed from her COVID. We lift up Wanda Long and her uh, continued struggle with uh, that pneumonia. And we lift up uh, Mary Cronk and any, any others that are still in a recovery mode. Father, we, we want to lift up Rhonda and Frady, Frandy Pierce and Hope for Haiti's Children and, and every organization that's having to deal with the chaos that's in Haiti. We pray for the people of Haiti. We pray for you to remove the darkness that seems to just rule over Haiti. Father, we want to lift up Shelley Bryant and her work in Singapore and elsewhere. We thank you that we have the opportunity to be involved in ministry with her. We lift up the folks in Afghanistan. Father, we lift up President Biden and Governor Abbott to you and all of those who lead in our government. Father, we continue to lift up our teachers, our healthcare workers, police, fire, EMS, and our military. Father, help us to remember all that God blesses us with and to be continually, every moment of every day, every day of every year, and every year of the rest of our lives to continue to be thankful to God. He has so richly blessed us. And it, and it is manifested most in the gift of Jesus. And so we say thank you for Jesus and we pray this in his name. And we all say amen and amen and amen. I want to remind you to check the website, visit our Facebook page, download, of course, Wednesday announcements from last night or last Sunday's Caring and Sharing. We have another great Sunday coming up this week. Hope you'll be there uh, to be part of what goes on every Sunday here. As always, Thank you so much for watching. I can pray that you continue to stay well and continue to experience the Lord's blessing and that He opens His eyes up to you of the many ways that you can reach out into the world around you with His good news and His blessing, wherever and to whoever it may be. Have a blessed evening.